Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and today we are painting this beautiful set of strawberries from this little collage piece that I picked up in an ephemera pack on Amazon. I'll have the link down below. And if you're interested in learning how I did this step by step, stick around for the lesson. All right, this was a really, really hot day. And I went out to my back garden studio, uh, my she shed, if you wanna see. I've got, I'll pop a little video in, in just a few minutes. But I wasn't planning on making this an actual video lesson when I first started. So I wasn't talking and that's why you're going to get a quick little speed video of drawing this vintage strawberry botanical type picture. I went straight in with my pen. This is the Uniball Signo 0.28 black. It's the RT1, which just means it's a retractable pen, but it has a permanent or not necessarily permanent, but it has a water resistant ink in it, which makes it lovely for doing my drawings straight in and then going in with the watercolor. I want you to try drawing straight with your pen and not worry about making lines that aren't correct or making lines that you know, crossover or whatever, don't worry about it because when you put color on it, it disguises those lines to a lot of an extent. Wow, my words. But anyway, I had a lot of fun, but it got way too hot and I ended up having to come indoors. So I'll catch it in just a minute after it's all finished being drawn. I was out in my outside garden studio space and I love that space, but it gets way too hot. If it's over 85, 90 outside, it gets too hot in there. And like this right here is a very vintage picture. And so there's very little contrast in it. My finished painting is going to have a lot more. One, because I'm working on a piece of white paper and this was done on like cream paper or something like that. This is out of a collage pack that I got. This was artwork that was done in a, like a botanical book. I am going to go ahead and put down a little bit of a creamy yellowy background. I'm not going to put it completely over the strawberries. I want my strawberries to have a nice clean background to work on. And the same with the flower. I want the flower to be a nice clean white. But everything else, all of the green 
anything that's green is going to get this creamy yellow background on it and yeah I'm just wetting the background down first this paper is not watercolor paper so you know paint on whatever you've got work with whatever you have don't don't feel limited because you don't have you know some fancy schmancy you know 100% cotton blah 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 just paint on what you've got this is mixed media paper it is you know just a plain old cellulose but it actually works really well for doing these kinds of paintings and then since these aren't finished artworks these are you know more sketches doodles things like that I'm going to grab a bit of yellow ochre because it's kind of that antique color and just make kind of a puddle of it and just start laying it in this is cheap paper cheap watercolor paints not you know it's not Daniel Smith this is the 40 co 42 color palette from the uh, Superior brand they they get rebranded and sold by a lot of different people so you know any of those 42 color palettes are probably the same thing check Lindsay the frugal crafter if you want to find out for sure she's got more information on it than I do oh that's looking pretty though I'm going to go ahead and grab my lightest green so that's another thing here is that you're gonna work from your lightest colors up to your darker colors and I'm just gonna mix it right in on this little palette -y bit here and that green is a little too a little too yellow maybe bring it down with a little bit of some blue Oh, there we go. There we go. Just a touch of some blue. These don't have their names on them. I'm not worried about finding out what those names are. I'm just going to put in the colors and just have fun. The three things that you really need to, to pay attention to when you are doing your artwork Number one, you need to be having fun and enjoying the process. And look at this, I'm painting wet onto wet here. I'm not worried if this goes outside the lines, big deal. I'm not too, I'm really not particular when it comes to stuff like this. I'm trying to get a bit of a looseness in here. I will tighten things up as I go along some but I don't want to tighten it up too much. Let's see that center has a bit of a green tone to it. This little strawberry is green. This little strawberry is green. The tops are green, the stems are green. Number two, is you need to watch your contrast. You need to have contrast in your painting. If you don't, it's all just going to basically look very vintage. There's very little contrast in this image. They do have contrast where you've got white petals and the green, the darker green. Getting the contrast first and then push your shadows. The biggest thing that beginning artists don't do is they don't push the shadows. And when you push the shadows, you push the form. You make it look rounded. You make it look flat with bumpies in it. And look at this. I've got all this little bleeding out going on. I'm happy about that. Not. I'm going to go ahead and put some red in on these strawberries. And I'm going to go for a pinky red with just a touch of some orange in it. This is my lightest red. 
If it bleeds out, it bleeds out. It's not a big deal. If I go over on onto leaves, it's not a big deal. Ooh, look at that. I just left some really bright and I'm going to be making that side darker and this side light with the highlight here. So once I figure out which way I'm going, I am going to try and match that up. And this is not exactly the same as this, right? I'm making it a little bit different. I didn't put all the same strawberries in. I did not did not worry about that composition. I wanted to make it my own composition. So I'm leaving some bits and pieces. I might even put a tiny hint of red into these little green ones just just because I like that could be like reflecting some of the other strawberries around it could be just getting ready to turn boy that's pretty now oh I forgot a green one oh well it'll just be a little bit a little bit darker green a little brownie green maybe more in shadow there we go I'm gonna drop some of that green that brownie green gray color into some of the leaves start building my shadow notice I'm not putting black into my into my color I put green and red together it's giving me sort of a brown a brownish tone that goes along it automatically feels like it belongs it doesn't feel like it's been um, an afterthought look at this right here where I put the dark underneath but I left that tip nice and bright Still using that same red that I mixed and adding a little bit of green to it. There we go. That's getting a nice color. I'm going underneath and just tapping in a little bit of this darker color. Here and there. Building up the contrast between the things that are in front and the things that are behind. And now I'm not a professional watercolorist. I am a person who just likes to have fun. And I think that people out on the internet need to see that you don't have to be a professional whatever to enjoy a process. You know, I'm not a professional embroiderer, but I love embroidery. If anybody wants to see embroidery, leave me a comment down below. We can have some slow embroidery, maybe a live stream embroidering. Would anybody watch that? Let me know. I'm trying to come up with things that people would enjoy, they would find relaxing. One of the things with creativity and doing creative things is that you don't have to be good at it for it to be good for your brain. You don't have to be good at it for it to be good for your soul, your heart. 
give you that that lift of joy those endorphins get released the dopamine in your brain when you do something like this I am going to go ahead and put a slightly gray tone onto this flower so it's going to have some gray blue type highlights on it so I'm gonna take I'm just gonna grab a blue let's see that's gonna give me a different green that's actually a pretty green I'll have to remember that um, I'm gonna take maybe I'll take that oh yeah so kind of a phthalo -y blue mixed with that red tone that I had sitting there that makes a really pretty kind of gray blue didn't grab black but I'm doing the shadows right here and we're going to look at the shadows and you say oh but that's a white flower why are you putting gray and if you look at it by giving it some contrast by putting in some shadow you make the flower pop out. It starts looking like an actual flower instead of just be white paper and dark lines. Now look at that. I can take that, that blue gray right in there and I might even darken it up just a little bit more. Take a little bit of that green and red into it. Make it a little bit darker, a little bit and put some of that into that center. I don't want to take out all the green that's in the center, but I do want to give it a little bit of definition, push those petals back a little bit in the corners. Okay, right here. Right here is where I am making contrast between where I am making, well, got a random line out there. That's okay. Right here. I'm putting some dark behind that center and that makes it pop forward. It makes it lift up and I think I want to go even darker and I might even just take that blue and just give it a little bit of that blue and the pink right on top of it. Ooh. That's nice. Oh yeah, see? Maybe a little bit under this corner and a little bit under this corner, a little bit under that edge. and a touch of it down here on the stem because since it's already green down there it's going to this is just going to become darker green if that puts that shadow oh that's so pretty me happy and that's that's what I want for you I want you to be doing this so it makes you happy 
And if you're not happy, figure out what's going on. Why aren't you? Are you worried about something else going on in your life right now? If you are, I hope that whatever is going on comes to a positive resolution or that something, you know, a lesson that's being learned creates space for you to breathe again. I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna go and work on my lovely pink strawberries. So I'm gonna clean a little bit of that green off. Not all of it, because green is a great color for toning your... See, look at that. Pick up a little bit of green into my pinky red, and it's making it darker. So we're looking at this going, stra oh, strawberry red. Nice contrast. Observe things around you. If you don't have a strawberry, you can, you know, put shine a light on your hand and look where the shadow is. See this right here, this little shape right here, it's almost strawberry shaped, isn't it? Right there. So you can see where the light is falling away. It's getting some shadow down here. It's getting highlight on top and it starts getting darker again as it goes away. Use what you have. You know, don't, don't worry if you don't have fresh strawberries in front of you. Find something that's roundish. Find something that's red and look at how the light changes the shadows. There's no black in this. No black anywhere on this painting. But we're getting shadows. We're getting contrast. We're getting, we're having fun. See, my three things. If you can have fun, put contrast in your art and make sure that you don't use black in your shadows. Your art will be taken to the next level instantly. So what I did is I picked up some of this green and I mixed it with some of that red and now I'm getting this lovely, lovely reddish brown that I can use for deeper shadows up under the leaves or around the edge where strawberries overlap. I can also start using this color to put in my seeds. Okay, the seeds are actually, you really don't see the seeds. What you see are the shadow caused by the strawberry where the seed sits. The seeds are actually usually fairly shiny. They're like little upside down C shapes where the seed sits.
is this the best painting I've ever done? No. Am I going to show this to you anyway? Yep. And why am I showing it to you anyway? Because you need to see that it doesn't always have to be absolutely perfect to be worthwhile. But I am going to go and push contrast. Push the contrast. Wow. All right. Now I want, because I want to kind of bump this up a little bit more, kind of bump this up a little bit more. I'm going to take some of that pure pigment and in the brighter areas, I'm going to pop that color on as a glaze, thin layer bright color. I'm not going to put it over all the white, but I'm going to put it pretty much over everything. Look at that. I'm going to take some of that dark color and I'm going to put a little bit of that in. Get my shape get my shadow put back in. Kind of took it out when I put my glaze on. There we go. Do need to pop out that little bit right there. Actually, what I think I'm going to do, because it's on the palette and I've got it, I'm going to sort of skip in just a little bit of this white. That's what it needed. It needed a little bit of that white skipped in. Skipping it in, just, just meaning let the, let the brush kind of dance on here. It's the shadows, it's the highlights. And if you had, if I had just left this plain, just red, green, yellow, all done, I could have been done with this, you know, 20 minutes ago, but it wouldn't look as pretty to my eye. Now, maybe you're saying, hey, you've totally overworked it. You should have left it. Let me know in the comments if you think that I totally overworked it or if I should have gone farther because that is one of my my things is that I I will work things way too much from time to time it all depends on the art and what's being done but there we go if you want to see me record a couple more of these as lessons or just as speed videos leave me a comment down below and let me know about that too if you want to see more of these make sure that you click that subscribe button and tell me you like it by clicking the like button i'll see you again really soon remember to go out do something creative take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you and i want to see you back here again really soon